Here's a list of the supplies you'll need. Under normal circumstances, I would usually use a matching thread, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be using a contrast thread so you can see it better. I'm going to keep the elastic attached to the roll and I'm only going to be cutting off the amount that I need to use. You're going to need a safety pin for feeding through the elastic. You can use a normal sized one or I like to use this knitting stitch holder. If your fabric is lightweight like my chambray, you're going to need some fusible interfacing for fusing the cuffs of your shorts. If you don't fuse your lightweight fabric, then there's a chance that your cuffs might be sagging in the middle. Always match the weight of your interfacing to the weight of your fabric. So I'm using a similar weight cotton interfacing for my chambray. The size you choose is based predominantly on your hip measurement. You need to comfortably be able to pull the shorts on over the largest part of your lower body. So your hip measurement often falls around your lower hips and across your seat circumference and you're going to want a good few inches of wiggle room. Take particular note on the finished garment length. This shorts was drafted for a 1.71 meter or 5 foot 7 inches. So if you're any shorter than that you might want to shorten your pattern pieces. To shorten your pattern piece, cut along the length in a shortened line and then make a measurement marking the amount that you want to shorten it by. Line up the bottom pattern piece with the top of this measurement line. Grade the side seams so that there's no overlap you'll see that this shaves off a tiny amount. To lengthen your pattern, you're going to cut along the lengthen and shorten line. Mark the amount that you want to lengthen your pattern by. Line up the bottom of the pattern to the bottom of this measurement and then line up the top, making sure that you're lining up the grain line with the top and the bottom. This will ensure that your pattern is completely aligned and fully in proportion. Now we're going to grade the sides of the pattern to be in a straight line again, and you'll see that it shaves off the tiniest little corner. Secure your pattern pieces and then cut off the excess paper. You'll need to cut out a set of front leg pieces, make notches for the top of the pleats. I've also marked them, but you don't need to do that. I just did it for the tutorial. You're going to need a set of back leg pieces, your front and back waistband pieces, I cut mine on the fold and then made notches for the center. You're going to need a set each of your pocket bags and your pocket facings. Your pocket bags has a notch on the side and the top. And lastly, if you are doing belt loops, which are optional, then you're going to need your belt loop piece. As previously mentioned, I'm going to be interfacing my cuffs for this lightweight chambray. And to do that, I'm going to cut a strip of interfacing that's 4.5 centimeters wide. This strip is going to go one centimeter above the bottom of the pattern piece. So I'm taking this grid ruler and I'm marking a one centimeter line. I'm just using my friction pen so that it will disappear with the iron. Now I can simply line up the strip with that one centimeter marking. I fused on the strip with my iron and as you can see, this cuff has got much more body now. The interfacing extends past the second fold line so that that fold becomes much more crisp. On your front leg piece, locate the smaller curve which is your pocket. Your pleats are going to be facing towards your pocket. Take your pleat notches and line up the raw edge, folding your pleats facing towards the pocket. Setting your machine to a long basting stitch, baste the top of these pleats in place. Now you can give it a good press with your iron. 
Do this on both your front leg pieces. With right sides facing, pin your pocket facing to your front leg piece at the pocket opening. Stitch this seam, setting your machine to the normal 2.5 stitch length and at the recommended 1 cm seam allowance we are going to be using throughout this pattern. You can clip the curved part of this seam or you can cut the whole seam allowance with your pinking shears. Press your seam allowances towards your pocket facing. Now we are going to be understitching on the pocket facing side, stitching the seam allowance to the pocket facing. Stitch as close to the edge as possible. Grade your seam allowances. Fold your pocket facing towards the wrong side. Give the pocket mouth a good press. Using your preferred top stitching length, which is usually between a 3 and a 4, top stitch your seam 3mm from the edge. With right sides together, align your pocket bag with your pocket facing. You have a notch on the top and on the side that aligns with the edge of your pocket mouth. Pin only the pocket pieces together. Sew the seam, remembering to put your stitch back to your 2.5 stitch length. Finish your raw edges in your preferred method. I've used my overlocker. Now, making sure that your notch is still in the right place, align the top and pin it. And the side and pin it. We are going to baste the pocket to the top and the side to keep it in place. Using your machine's longest stitch length, baste the top and the side. We are basting within the seam allowance so that these stitches will not be visible. With right sides facing, place the front and back leg pieces for each leg together and pin the side and inseam. Finish the raw edges in your preferred method and then press the seams towards the back. To pin the crotch seam, turn one of the legs right side out and place it inside the other leg so that the right sides are facing each other. Match your inseam by placing them together. This is personal preference, but I like to let the seam allowances face in opposite directions, which makes for a flatter seam. Stitch your crotch seam and then finish the raw edges in your desired method. Press your seam towards one side. If you've chosen to add belt loops to your shorts, then finish the raw edge of one long side of your belt loop pattern piece. Fold up the raw edge of one long side by one centimeter. Then fold the finish edge over by one centimeter to conceal the raw edge. Working from the right side, top stitch the belt loop strip 3mm or an eighth of an inch away from both long edges.
Cut your belt loop strip into 5 equal pieces. Make sure that you've transferred your belt loop placement marking on your back shorts piece. With right sides facing, place your belt loop at the folded edge of the pleat that's closest to your pocket. Do the same on the other side. Pin a belt loop to the markings you made on your back shorts piece, as well as the center of your back shorts. Baste all five belt loops in place. Pin the short ends of your front and back waistbands together. Stitch these seams and press them open. With wrong sides facing, fold your waistband in half and press. Unfold the waistband and with right sides facing each other, pin it to the top edge of the shorts, matching the centre fronts, centre backs and side seams. Stitch the seam all the way around. Refold the waistband and pin the unattached edge to the shorts. Pin all the way around, leaving a 5cm gap. This gap is going to allow us to feed the elastic through. I marked the beginning and the end of my gap with two pins, so that I can remember to start and stop there. Now attach your safety pin to your elastic and feed it through the gap that we created. As you feed your elastic through, make sure that you're not twisting it. I'm making this shorts for my daughter so I fit it on her and determined the exact size. I am going to be top stitching this elastic down which slightly stretches it out a little bit more. So I did make it ever so slightly more snug than what I wanted it to be. Overlap the two ends of the elastic and then secure it by stitching it in place. Stitch close the gap making sure that you're not catching the elastic in your stitching. Finish the raw edges together. Press them towards the shorts.
For technique B, we are going to be concealing the raw edge by folding it over and stitching in the ditch. Start by sewing a basting stitch line just shy of 1 cm 3 8 inch from the edge of your waistband. Using this stitch line, press up your seam allowance towards the wrong side. Matching the side seams and center front and back with right sides facing, pin your waistband to your shorts along the unpressed edge. Sew all the way around. Press the raw edges towards the waistband. Refold the waistband, pinning the folded seam allowance to the inside waistband edge. Make sure you're covering the stitch line with your folded seam allowance. Pin one section at a time and then take the pin and transfer it to the right side, making sure that your pins are lying in the correct direction for pulling out when you're sewing it at the machine. Stitch in the ditch from the right side of your garment, leaving a 5 cm or 2 inch gap. I've already measured and cut my elastic around my waist and now by placing a safety pin on the edge I'm feeding it through the waistband. Overlap the ends and stitch it in place. Pin the opening closed and once again by stitching in the ditch, stitch the opening closed. Go around your elastic a couple of times making sure that it's all lying flat and is evenly distributed. Press your hems up by 1 cm 3 8 inch. Then press it up again by 4 cm 1 and 5 8 inch. Top stitch in place close to the hem edge. This top stitching line will be seen from the right side of the garment. Now turn your cuffs up towards the right side of your garment. Press your hem up. Pin and stitch your cuffs in place at the inseam and side seam by stitching in the ditch. If your machine has trouble starting stitching on a thick seam, place something at the back of your presser foot which will level out your presser foot and make it feed through evenly. You can use a button, a folded up piece of fabric, anything that's the same thickness as your fabric. Pin the side seams of your elastic and stitch in the ditch to secure. This will help that your elastic doesn't fold or twist within your waistband while you are wearing it.
It is optional but highly recommended that you top stitch your elastic in place. You're going to be making two stitching lines and it's going to be on your widest stitch length. Each line is going to be 1.8 centimeters away from each edge of the waistband. Every time you stop to readjust and stretch out your elastic, make sure that your needle is down. On each belt loop mark 1 cm down from the waistband seam line. Back stitch a few times over each belt loop to ensure that they are securely stitched in place. Press the bottom of the belt loops under by 1 cm 3 8 inch. Bring the belt loops up so that the pressed and folded edge meets the top of the waistband. Secure the top of each belt loop with a bar tack. Practice your bar tack first on a piece of scrap fabric so that you know you are happy with it. I went with a zigzag stitch width of 2. Once again, place something at the back of your presser foot so that it's leveled out and stitches easily across this thick area. 